We are studying the Gospel of Luke from the Greek language. We read the Greek text and we translate it and look at the verbs and the action and we read the Amplified Bible to expound upon it. And we're in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. We're one third of the way through Luke. So, and we started this year. This is in this year. Luke is the longest gospel and the longest chapters also. I think there's a, over 1,100 verses in Luke. <coughs> 27, 9 and 27 were actually finished here, but we need to read this verse to go on. We're going to talk about the transfiguration of Jesus, the real transfiguration of Jesus. Lego de himen alithos, asen tenes ton alto, as te koto, hoi u me, gu, gu es son te, donatu, eos on, edusen tain basileo tu theu. Well, furthermore, I say to you all, truly, little adverb of affirmation there. By the way, page 15, I look at the Greek lexicon, lexicon that alethos. It means no shadows. Truly, there are some of the ones belonging to him having stood. These the ones know not. They may taste death. They may taste death for themselves until He's talking about more than one. Now we know that John was a time traveler. And he wrote the book of Revelation. And the Lord took him to the Lord's day. But we're going to see something else here. That they may see and behold the kingdom belonging to God. 9.28 now. Again to de meta tus, logos tutos, jose hemere, octo, kai, paralabod, Petron, Kai, Ewane, Kai, Yegavon, Anebe, Eisto, Oros, Pros, Ux, Aste. Now, after eight days, eight days later now, he said that, that there would be some standing there that would not taste death until they saw the Son of Man Jesus in the glory of his kingdom. And it became or came to pass after days, after the words these, about days eight. Now the word chi there is in brackets, so it's actually not there. And uh, so we can either put it and or not, but it, somebody added it later. About days eight. And having taken Peter and John and James, he went up into a mountain to pray. Prosukeste, to pray. Verse number 29 now. Kai agenito ento prosukeste, alto ento edos, tu prosopo, alto heteron kai ho hematismos. Alto. Lucos ex as. <clears throat> and it came to pass or it became literally for itself during the prayer in to prosecucaste that's present infinitive middle voice while Jesus was praying of his own volition the appearance the form of the face of him had teron, different, different kind, different species now, different. And the hamatismos, the clothing of him, leukos, we get a word leukemia from that one, from white blood cells. His clothing was white, gleaming, shining, brilliant, like a star or the moon or the sun shining. But more, the sun is more yellow. This is bright white. Bright white. Like the moon, if it's clear, beautiful, bright. 
are like the stars of heaven, shining and gleaming like stars, brilliance, like a pure, pure white light. Kai Edu Andres. Duo. Sin el alon. Auto otenes. Eson Moses. Kai Elias. And behold, men, two men, uh, they uh, kept on talking with him. And of course, this him here is Jesus. And they were, they kept on being Moses, Moshe, and Elijah. Now, Moses means to draw out or to rescue. And Elijah means God is Jehovah, or Jehovah is God. 9 and verse 31. Hoi athentes in doxe elegon ten exodon exodon that is autu hen emelain pleron en urusalem And the ones having appeared, having appeared in glory. Here we have the, the resurrected Moses and Elijah. Now it said that Elijah would come before that great day. And Elijah re really was John the Baptist. But here we have the real Elijah here. In, and they're going to get to see him now. There's no need to ask if Elijah is supposed to come. Because here he is. And having appeared in glory. They kept on saying uh, the exodus of him, which he kept on being about to be accomplished. That word exodus there, there's we get the word, get the word uh, exodus in the Old Testament, the exodo. The exit of him, the way out, how he's going to leave this world. The exodus of him, which he kept on being about to, to accomplish, filled up in Jerusalem. Now let's look at Peter. Peter is always on the scene, we know. Ho de Petros, kai hoi sin auto, eson bebar remenoi, hypno, dier diger reg goru santos. Day I don Tain Doxon Autu Kai Tus Dia Andros Tus Sin Est Totos Autu And the one Peter and the ones with him they continued or they kept on being a uh, burden bed bar manoi This is a deep, heavy burden. Barrio from Barrio. Nominee plural masculine, perfect participle passive. They kept on being burdened in hypno. Hypno means hypnosis. Sleep kind of hypnotizes you. The Lord Jesus Christ hypnotized Adam in the garden and took his sides from him, bones and fleshes and bloods, and made woman. That word hypno there means to sleep or to cause to sleep. They were, they were burdened with sleep. And then having awakened thoroughly, dia gregore santes. Gregorio means to watch. And this means thoroughly that they were awakened or they were looking and watching something. Dia and Gregorio. Nominative plural masculine, first terrorist, participle active. Then we have that weak adversative conjunction particle day there. Moreover, or but, they beheld the glory of him. And the two men, the ones having stood with him, the ones having stood with him. Verse number 32. Verse number 33 now. Kaya genito ento dia coris. Seste autos op auto epan ho petros proston esum. 
epistata, kalon estin. Long verse. Himas, hode ene kai poesomen, skenas tres mian, si kai mian moshe, kai mian elaya, me edos ha lege. Peter was uh, real excited here. He was just babbling. Peter was just babbling. He didn't even know what he was saying. And it came to pass, it became in the, or during the, to divide apart them from him. Dia and Choris zeste. It comes from Dia and Chorizomai, and that means to split apart them from him. He said, the one Peter, toward the Jesus, hypostata. Now here we have the word hypostata. Again, this is a high word for, for master teacher. It means uh, honorable rabbi, doctor of letters, master teacher. Good kalon it is for us here to be. It's good for us to be here. And let us make uh, tents, shades, shelters. Three. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not having known what he said. He just said this and didn't know what he's saying. He was talking murologia. Like a moron. Talking like a moron. Just talking like someone that's brain was totally disengaged from their mouth. Mm -hmm. 934. Tata de Alton Legontes. Aganito. Nephile. Kai. Epes Kiazin. Altus. E. Fove. They song. They in to es el thing. Altos es tain nephilim. And these things, him saying, to come to pass, a cloud, a nephilim, a cloud, and it kept on overshadowing, it kept on overshadowing them. And they feared. They were caused to fear. Greatly. They were greatly a cause to fear. And or moreover, furthermore, in the to enter into them into the cloud. Verse number thirty-five. Go ahead, Marilyn. Kai phone againato. Ectase nephilim. Lugusen hutos esten ho huios mu ho ek le gemenos autu akuete. Now I want to tell you that it said in a voice, a sound great, it became out of the cloud. Now this word nephilim here is not nephilim. That's Hebrew. Nephilim means fallen ones. Right here, nephilim means clouds. Clouds. And out of the cloud, saying, this one, who told this one right here, the monster pronoun, he is the son belonging to me. The one <coughs> having been chosen. <coughs> having been picked out. That's from Ek and Lego. That's elected, having been elected. Nominative, singular, masculine. Perfect, participle, passive voice. Having been elected from him, you hear, you listen to him. Listen and obey. That's what that word means. Verse number 36. Kai antogeneste, tain phonain, urethe, esus monos, kai autoi, esig geson, kai udani, apongalion, en, ekanes, Te Sameros, Uthain, Hon, Eurekin.
Kai. And in the to become the voice was found Jesus only. And the ones, they were shut up. They were silent. They were muzzled. And not one of them, they reported, look at that word, apongaleon. Apongaleon. They were reported in those the days, not one thing, which is they had seen. They know they didn't tell anybody what they'd seen. Now let's go to the Amplified Bible. Let's start back on number 27. We're talking about the transfiguration of Jesus. 9 and verse 27. Let's uh, all the way back up in 18 through 27 before that we had the disciples of Jesus got off on the wrong track. And they started getting puffed up and wanting to know who was the best and, and all of that. And then in verse number 27, well, 26, because whoever is ashamed of me and my teachings of him will the Son of Man be ashamed of when he comes into the threefold glory, that is, the splendor and majesty of himself and of the Father and the Holy Angels. Verse number 27 now. And this leads us up. It is a preview of the coming attraction. However, I tell you truly, Alethos, there are some of those standing here, right there, who will not taste of death before they see the kingdom of God in glory. Now about eight days after these things, after these teachings, Jesus took with him Peter, and John and James. And he went up, went up on top of a mountain to pray. This is what the mount, this is what they call the Mount of Transfiguration. Transfiguration, when the, the rapture takes place, when the rapture takes place, I believe at the end of the church age, the bodies in the, in the ground will be changed and reassembled by God that they will shout at the shout of the Lord Jesus and the archangel of God that the dead in Christ will rise before those that are alive will be raptured or changed or transfigured all of the basic elements that is in the ground from each and every person that has been that has died and been overtaken by death God will reassemble them in his great assembly plant in the sky as they come from the ground. No matter what happens to your body, whether it's in the ocean or the bottom of the ocean and went through fish two or three times, whatever happens to you, God's going to find every element in you and reassemble you. And he was praying and the appearance of his countenance became altered and different. And his raiment was had become dazzling white, flashing with lightning and brilliance and lightning. People ask me a lot of times, should we cremate our loved ones? We don't have enough money to have them uh, buried. And we don't have enough money to, to pay a, a mortician to preserve their body and put them in a coffin and all this. And I said, well, no matter what happens to that person's body, the Lord's going to find out every element of it. Many people have been burned alive until there's nothing there. Just a few years ago, we live out on a farm in the Old River area, south of Bakersfield, between Taft and Arvin, Funkin Center, and Metler. There was a Hispanic worker out there that could not read English. And two times he had done this. The couple of years before, he was out on this farm and he was deep plowing with these big rippers. And he ripped up a high pressure natural gas line and that thing screamed like a jet airplane and you could hear it for 15 miles. 
Well, he did it again. He didn't heed the warning signs. And he had a D9 caterpillar, I think it was, or D8, I can't remember, it was a big one. And he ripped that line again, except this time there were sparks. And there was an explosion that you would think, we are about seven to ten miles away from where that is. And the, the flames went hundreds of feet in the air. That D9, D8 or D9 caterpillar turned upside down and almost totally melted it. They did not find that person's body at all. They didn't know where he even was. It burned the house down, burned cars up in the garage. One woman barely snatched her child out, was running, screaming down the road, burning, burning alive. She kept the baby covered up. She was, had, she was in the hospital for more than a year over this mishap. If every one of those persons would have died there, if they didn't know the Lord, they will be resurrected. Every cell in their body will be resurrected here at the great white throne judgment. If they didn't know the Lord. Here at the rapture, their bodies will be put all back together. All the people that are buried at sea, all the people that have been eaten by sharks and whatever, burned up, dismembered, it doesn't matter. In World War II, when they had these big bombs, Audie Murphy was standing out there on Anzio Beach and a bomb came in and the guy that was up there, he could see him about 100 yards away, he was up there talking and it vaporized him. They could not find any part of him. They would go into the caves where people were hiding and they used flamethrowers on them and burned them. Burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them. They took bodies of soldiers and put them in caves and wells and mines and poured flammable material on them and burned them till they were no more. There's not one person saved or lost. That body is so dismembered and so charred and so dissolved that God will not be able to put it back together again at the resurrection. And he was praying for the appearance, and the appearance of his countenance became altered and different, and his raiment became dazzling white and flashing with brilliance and lightning. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses, Moshe, and Elijah, <clears throat> who appeared in splendor and majesty and brightness and were speaking of his exit from life, exodus from life. One of these days, people, are you going to have an exodus? You will leave this world. Your body won't. It'll stay here. But your spirit and soul will go to be with God or someplace else in Hades. When you close your eyes in death, you don't cease to exist. You do not cease to exist. When you close your eyes in death, that body sleeps and is buried or whatever. But that soul and spirit goes to be with God. Now the Jewish idea of the mission and the Talmud is, is that you're an eternal, uh, every Jew is an eternal part of God. And that when a man dies, uh, well, first of all, when he comes into this world, there's great pain, which there probably is when you're born. Great pain. Because God has taken an eternal soul in the an embryo, and it becomes an embryo in life, a brephos in the Greek language, and that baby hurts and and, 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 and suffers because that eternal soul now this is what, what I, I believe okay this is what the Jews believe that eternal soul is suffered because it, it, something out of heaven 
is brought down to earth in a human form which it doesn't like. And then it finally brings forth and it's born, which is much more suffering, they say. And it probably is suffering when a child is born. We don't know how bad a child suffers. A mother suffers. But how the child squished and pulled and all that, all that time. The child must suffer, I'm sure. But the Jews say, well, you're born into this world. You're born in suffering. And that flesh in you tries to lead you the wrong way all the time. But the soul in you, it, you have two souls. You have two souls. The Bible says you have a soul, one soul, and one spirit. But they're not going to the Bible. They're going to the mission and the Talmud. And they say when a person dies, when a person dies, that his uh, soul hovers around there and doesn't leave for at least three days. And people mourn real hard for three days, and then when they come to the next four days, they mourn a little less, and they mourn on and on and on. Finally, after a year, they don't mourn anymore. But they say <coughs> that the spirit, if it's a bad person, a person that hasn't done all of the ceremonies of the Jewish people, if he goes out and he leaves his life <coughs> without doing the things he should have done, that he's on probation for 12 months. <coughs> that he's being cleansed. And that this is the only hell there is, they say. The only hell there is is that 12 months. That a person, after he dies, that he's being cleansed. And he's suffering for any wrong he did. But they usually only, God only lets them suffer for 11 months because he won't make anybody go 12 months of so being ashamed. <coughs> ashamed. Suffering with shame. Now that's nothing but fairy tales. The real story is that when you leave this world, <coughs> when your body dies, your body dies. The soul and the spirit exit. And he's talking about this exodus here. And they either go with God or they go to the holding place of Hades until you're resurrected in the white throne judgment if you're lost. <coughs> Let's go on a little further. All right. Verse number 33. And it occurred, as the men were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is delightful and good that we are here. Let us construct three booths or huts, tents, shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not noticing or knowing what he was saying at all. He was babbling. But even as he was saying this, a cloud came and began to overshadow them. And they were seized with alarm and terror and struck with fear as they entered into the cloud. <clears throat> then there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen one, my elected one, my beloved one, listen to and yield to and obey him. And when the voice had died away, Jesus was found there alone. And they kept still. They sh were shut up. Their mouths were, they were gagged. And they told no one at that time any of these things that they had seen. Our Father, we send this message out this night. Father, I pray if there's one lost out there that they'll find you. I pray for Marna's family in Australia. I pray for all of them. Pray for her. So far away. I pray for each and every one. For Donald, Grewar, and in Wales and Troy and the or Mark in New York and our faithful listener in Texas. 
the ones in China, Japan, the Middle East, and the Far East. Father, I pray there's one out there that hears your word tonight that they will know for sure about heaven and hell. Our message tonight was about heaven and hell. It's both. It's real. Hell is eternal and heaven is eternal. Father, please be with your word. Help us to stir hearts to do noble things, to serve you, to call upon you for Savior. Call upon your Son that he died for them, that he rose forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>